Okay, well, my name is Julio. Uh, I'm working for SAIS. Uh, just as an introduction, SAIS is a, a company with more than 30 years of experience in the field of testing uh, for different uh, kind of products and appliances. Uh, at the energy department, we are specialized in HVAC products and we are working worldwide for uh, manufacturers of uh, air conditioners and heat pumps mainly. And we are cooperating also as a third party independent and accredited laboratory uh, for certification bodies, uh, including Eurovent. Uh, regarding Eurovent, we are cooperating in certification programs as the uh, uh, IT cooling program for sure. Also the AC uh, certification program, which is dealing with uh, air conditioners and heat pumps from uh, household appliances still industrial uh, range. Um, also in the BFF certification program dealing with uh, variable refrigerant flow units, uh, liquid chilling packages also program and in the rooftops program. So this is our experience in the, in the field of uh, testing products uh, HVAC related. Uh, regarding the contents of the presentation, I will just introduce the uh, what we mean by CRAC and CRAH units. And then we will go with uh, an overview of available European uh, testing standards for performance that can be applied for IT cooling products. Uh, an overview of the testing conditions and the test methods we are currently implementing for evaluating the performance of these products. And finally, I will show uh, how we bring uh, one of these products into the laboratory uh, and, and I will show you uh, just a very example of uh, the elements involved in the testing process. So uh, regarding the uh, definitions, uh, the CRC stands for computer room air conditioner and a CRC unit works like an air conditioner which has an inbuilt direct expansion refrigeration cycle. The compressors which are required to power the refrigeration cycle are also normally located within the CRAC unit. As the cooling is accomplished by blowing the air over the cooling coil, which is filled with refrigerant. And this is for the CRAC. The CRAH stands for computer room air handler. A CRAH unit is similar to a chilled water air handling unit found in many high rise commercial office buildings or malls. But here the cooling is accomplished by blowing air over the cooling coil filled with the chilled water. So the system in this part is uh, less uh, complex compared to the CRAC. And the chilled water is supplied by a, a chiller, which is normally located outside the building. Regarding the standards we may apply, we have uh, we find the EN14511 series, which are dealing with uh, air conditioners and heat pumps with vertical driven compressors. This is the standard we could apply in case of uh, uh, testing CRIC products. And then we have the EN1397 standard, which is dealing with hydronic fan coils, which is uh, implementing the same method uh, we can use to for the performance evaluation of a CRAH unit. Um, I have to say that uh, in Europe, we do not have any specific standards so far uh, dedicated to IT cooling technologies. So for the moment, we have to rely on uh, sometimes ASRA standards and other. Otherwise, we may use the, uh, the standards I have previously uh, introduced. And for the question in the screen, do we need to develop an ad hoc testing standard for information technology cooling, cooling equipment in Europe? Uh, well, uh, my opinion is that uh, we should do something with that because um, for the moment we could be uh, testing uh, CRAC traditional CRAC and CRAH units uh, with uh, current European standards, but uh, newest products taking benefit of free cooling or evaporative cooling technologies for sure, we require new testing uh, standards, including also new testing conditions. 
Um, next, uh, we will go with the uh, test conditions we are currently implementing in our test and uh, a brief description of the test method. Regarding the test conditions, uh, the European standard defines just one test condition for the uh, closed control units, which are uh, TRAC related. And the condition uh, is marked in the screen. The tests are done at 35 degrees uh, outdoor type temperature conditions and uh, 24 degrees indoor. And the, the absolute humidity uh, is kept at 9.3 grams uh, of water per kilo of dry air. Um, European certification has extended these uh, test conditions and it is using, uh, it has defined four different classes of uh, temperature conditions, which is in line with the, uh, with the trends in the, in the hardware, uh, in the, uh, which is dealing with, uh, able of dealing with uh, higher and higher temperatures in the, uh, in the data centers. So uh, for the moment, Eurovent is making mandatory to certify uh, the class two conditions, which are 35 degrees outdoor with 30 degrees indoor air entering dry bulb and 35 relative humidity, 35% uh, for the relative humidity. And the other three conditions, uh, class one, class three, and class four are just uh, there as optional. In case of water condensed units, the uh, conditions they have uh, fixed for the moment uh, are those in the screen. Uh, water inlet is always 30 degrees and the water uh, all the, from the condenser side is always 35. Um, next, uh, we will go with the test conditions for the CRAH units, where we have uh, no specific test conditions in the European standards, and we just uh, need to rely for the moment in the Eurovent test conditions. And uh, for the case, they have also defined four places uh, with the test conditions uh, shown in the screen. <clears throat> the class two, once again, is mandatory, so we have 10 degrees for the water entering in the uh, evaporator side and uh, 16 degrees Celsius for the uh, living water temperature. And uh, the indoor temperature condition is the same as for the CRAC uh, units. Uh, I have to say that these conditions, those from the uh, CRAC units and, and these ones uh, are similar to those uh, referred in ASRI uh, 127. And next, uh, I will go with the test methods briefly. Uh, we have two main test methods, the air enthalpy test method and the water enthalpy test method. The air enthalpy test method is uh, implemented when we are testing a CRAC unit. And uh, the water enthalpy test method is implemented with, when we are testing a CRAH unit. So here in the screen, we have a raised view of, uh, with a schematic of the main uh, items we find inside the laboratory. First, in this area, we are simulating the outdoor uh, ambient temperature and humidity conditions. Here, we have the condenser of the IT cooling product. Here, we have the refrigerant pipes leading into the uh, indoor side of the IT cooling unit. And in this room, we are uh, keeping constant the indoor temperature conditions that we need for the uh, air inlet to the coil of the uh, indoor side of the uh, indoor part of the IT cooling unit. Here we have an air handling unit, which is compensated for the cooling effect of the IT cooling unit during the test. So we have to provide uh, enough uh, 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 we need to reheat the air and provide also humidity if the IT cooling unit is uh, dehumidifying. So uh, in this section, we have a psychrometer where we check the dry bulb and wet bulb temperature conditions at the inlet of the coil uh, of the indoor side of the, of the fan coil. Then the fan coil is blowing into this section, not the fan coil, excuse me, the IT cooling unit is blowing into this section. And we are taking the air this way 
into this AMCA box, which is an airflow measurement device. And in this part, we are checking with another psychometer, psychometer the dry valve and uh, wet valve temperature conditions for the living air. So we have temperature, uh, we can determine the uh, air enthalpy entering the indoor side of the unit. We can determine the air enthalpy uh, of the air coming out from the unit. And in this section, we are uh, measuring the, uh, the air flow rate uh, coming from the unit. And these three elements will be combined for calculating the final total cooling capacity and in the end, the efficiency, which is what we are going to see now in terms of equation. So the total cooling capacity is defined as the uh, air volume flow rate multiplied by the uh, air enthalpy difference between the uh, air entering the uh, indoor coil and air leaving the outdoor coil. And uh, here we have the um, um, specific air volume, which is uh, related to the air density and a correction factor, which is coming from the absolute humidity, the, the amount of water we have in the air. Then the total cooling capacity can be uh, also divided into a sensible and latent capacity. The sensible capacity is defined as the uh, air volume flow rate multiplied by the specific heat in the air of the air and multiply by the temperature at the uh, inlet of the of the coil minus the specific heat of the air multiplied by the temperature uh, of the air uh, leaving the, uh, the indoor coil and once again we are dividing by the um, specific volume and uh, the factor taking into account the, the humidity in the coil. and last we have the latent capacity which can be expressed in different ways the most common uh, we use is this one, which is just uh, uh, to say that the latent capacity is the total cooling capacity minus the sensible capacity. Uh, the latent capacity uh, is sometimes considered as a, can be considered as a, a contribution to the efficiency drop of the system because the latent capacity is an amount of cooling capacity we are uh, using in order to dehumidify the air. So this is not uh, transferred to the room in terms of a temperature drop. So the less the latent capacity, normally the highest uh, deficiency in the system. Regarding the water enthalpy test method, the system we need to test this kind of units is less complex. Uh, here in the screen we have the right view of the main elements uh, i will focus on the indoor part in the indoor side so here we have the crh unit and the crh unit is flowing into a discharge duct where we control the external static pressure by means of a damper and we also check the external static pressure and uh, in the same way uh, as we did for the crac units we check uh, for the um, uh, air conditions going uh, uh, coming into the the indoor coil uh, because uh, we need to to make sure that we are uh, running the test under uh, steady state conditions. And here we have once again the uh, air handling unit to compensate for the cooling effect and the humidifying effect of the uh, uh, CRAH unit. And the uh, element we need here is uh, the elements the CRH unit is needing is a fixed water flow rate and a fixed inlet water temperature. So for the purpose, what we will need is a, a kind of a chiller uh, providing this uh, cold water at a fixed flow rate and fixed temperature. So for the measurement, what we will need to add is uh, a couple of sensors to determine the water temperature conditions at the inlet and the outlet of the CRAH unit. And we will also need a mass flow rate, uh, water mass flow rate device uh, to check uh, to check the uh, the water flow rate going to the uh, CRAH unit. 
And in terms of equations, uh, they are rather simple compared to the previous one. The total cooling capacity is calculated as the mass, the water mass flow rate multiplied by the uh, water entropy difference. And we need to add a correction factor, which is the which is the power input to the IT cooling uh, product. And then the latent cooling capacity is calculated uh, always as uh, water latent uh, uh, heat of vaporization multiplied by the uh, condensate flow rate, the amount of water being condensed by the, uh, by the CRH unit. And in the end, the sensible cooling capacity is calculated as the total cooling capacity minus the, the latent. What do we get from the tests? Well, first of all, I have to say that uh, these test methods uh, are offering accuracies ranging between 3% and up to 10% when we are testing at uh, full load test conditions. If we are testing under part load conditions, uh, which by the way are not still defined also in the standards, um, the accuracies will uh, will be uh, will be lower. Huh? The, the uncertainty, the measurement uncertainty, increases. And uh, the main results we get for from these tests are shown in the screen: the total cooling capacity of the unit, the sensible and the latent cooling capacities of the units, the power input to the product. The energy efficiency ratio expressed as the total cooling capacity divided by the power input. And uh, we also get uh, reliable data for the airflow rate and uh, the external static pressure. And uh, what we have next is uh, the pictorial example of uh, how we implement the test uh, over uh, a unit. The example we are going to see uh, is uh, focused on a single package unit, water condensed, and uh, the configuration is shown in the screen. The unit is taking the air from the top of the unit, and uh, the discharge air is going down flow into a, a technical uh, a technical flow. So. This is a right view of uh, one of our facilities in Spain. This facility is uh, around uh, 500 square meters in, uh, in floor in footprint, and we have uh, three rooms in the in the main floor, which uh, are approximately 150 square meters each. And in these three rooms, we can control the ambient temperature conditions and uh, humidity within the range uh, starting at minus 20 degrees Celsius and ending up around 55 degrees Celsius. And then we have a basement uh, section which is interconnecting these two rooms. And uh, that but this basement area is used to uh, to address the, uh, the airflow rate in case of units uh, like the one we are going to see in the example. Uh, by the way, the capacity range of this facility ends around uh, uh, 100 kilowatts total cooling capacity. This is the maximum we can test uh, so far. Here we see a picture of the uh, IT cooling product already placed on site for, for testing. This is the unit itself. Below the unit, we have a duct, which is connecting the unit uh, with the basement area. And what we can see in the screen is first at, at the top of the, uh, above the unit, we have an air sampling tree. Here we are taking, uh, we are measuring the uh, dry valve and wet valve temperature conditions for the air entering uh, the unit. And what we see here around the unit is uh, 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 connecting uh, with the chiller, which is outside. 
and uh, for for uh, for keeping the uh, the water flow rate and the temperature the water temperature uh, constant during the test. So next we go into the basement section. Above this duct we have the unit installed, and here we are determining uh, the external static pressure with this, that is measured in duct. And the air is taken this way into a discharge plenum. In this discharge plenum, we are also measuring the dry valve and well valve, wet valve temperature conditions. So we are determining the uh, air enthalpy at the living section of the IT cooling product. And then we take the air this way into another plenum. This plenum is rather important because in this plenum, we do what we call the zero pascals adjustment, which means that uh, uh, we will force, by means of a damper inside the, the plenum, we will force that from this point, um, the pressure difference between inside the plenum and outside is zero pascals exactly. So if we go uh, backwards, uh, and we keep the zero pascal conditions here during the test, we can make sure that the pressure drop the unit is facing will be equivalent to that, uh, that, to, that to, the, to a real situation. We are somehow putting a virtual duct network connected to the unit. Then we need to continue uh, leading the uh, the airflow to the basement area and we need to take it up into the next room because uh, in this room we still need to do uh, the airflow measurement so here we were checking the air enthalpy at the inlet in these sections we are checking the air enthalpy at the outlet of the unit and we still need to go into the uh, airflow measurement device located here in order to to come to have all the parameters we need to the uh, for for the calculation of the total cooling capacity what we have what we find inside the uh, airflow measurement device is shown in this picture we have an air sampling tree once once again and a psychrometer to determine uh dry valve and temper and wet valve temperature conditions once again but in this case, we are not checking air enthalpy, but uh, combined with uh, the atmospheric pressure, what we are calculating is the um, air density. And uh, from this point, and still inside the airflow measurement device, what we find is a system of nozzles, standardized nozzles, which are used for the purpose of evaluating the uh, uh, volume flow rate coming out from the unit. By knowing the pressure drop these nozzles are putting into the circuit, we calculate the Reynolds number, and from the Reynolds number and the discharge coefficient of the nozzles, we calculate the volume flow rate coming out from the unit. And when we combine this with the knowledge about the air density we have from the previous psychometer, we can calculate the air mass flow rate, which is the latest uh, input we need to complete the calculation of the, of the total cooling capacity. Um, in the same facility, we are able to test also for acoustics. So uh, in the basement area, we can even test uh, uh, the noise coming from the duct, being radiated from the duct of the unit, and it's uh, acoustically uh, treated. And uh, just to give you an idea, the cost of this facility is uh, roughly 3 million euros and it's fully dedicated to, uh, to testing this kind of appliances. Um, uh, Marcus and all the people attending, uh, that was all for, for my side. Thank you, Julio.